I printed a deer design from my computer and traced it on a clear Ziploc bag. I cut a square hole in the cardboard box using a utility knife. Next, I taped the Ziploc bag design over the hole. Then, I placed the box in front of the wall. I turned my cell phone light on. I put it inside of the box at the opposite end as the design and I closed the lid. Put covers over the windows. I traced the design on the wall using a pencil. Once I was done, I turned the lights back on and was ready to paint. I was careful to work from top down and left to right so I didn't smudge the wet paint. When it was completely dry, I removed the remaining pencil marks with an eraser and damp rag. And here's my stunning wall feature for only the cost of paint. It really gave this book nook a wow factor and has made two boys very happy. So I went to the dollar store and I bought three bags of those vase filler gems. After sorting them, I washed them off using Blue Dawn and water and then laid them out to dry. I drew lines from the edge of the vanity to meet the mirror line. I applied a thin coat of mastic using a small notched trowel. Then the fun began as I pressed the gems into the mastic. I worked in small sections so the mastic wouldn't dry too quickly. Once I was done, I mixed the grout. I mixed one cup of grout to a half a cup of water. I applied the grout in small sections, making sure I was pushing it between each of the gems. I wanted to make sure that every spot was filled in between them. After one hour, I checked again, and yep, it was nice and dry. Using a large spun and plain water, I washed away all of the excess grout. I removed the painter's tape that I had placed on the top of the vanity and applied caulk, smoothing it out with my finger. Now, what a difference it makes, and no more splattered wall. I fell in love with this beautiful floral fabric and I knew it would be perfect on my office wall. We measured the wall to make sure we purchased enough. We knew we needed three panels, so we had them cut accordingly. We started in the corner and used a staple gun to secure the fabric in place. After that, we used spray adhesive to ensure the fabric was well secured. Before drying starts, gently smooth out all air bubbles. Don't forget to overlap about an inch with each panel for a smooth transition and line up your patterns as best you can. Once all panels are hung, smooth and staple along the bottom about a quarter of an inch above your baseboard. Using an X-Acto knife, cut fabric starting in the top corner going down. This will help to make sure the fabric does not stretch or tear. Place your knife between the baseboard and a credit card to help you make the perfect straight line. Gently cut around any outlets using your X-Acto knife and a credit card. And there you have it, a fun and easy change to any room. So I headed to the hardware store and picked up some 1x4s. I measured the wall and marked out where my boards would go on the wall. I made sure it was level and then used a nail gun to attach the boards vertically to the wall. Now I could measure down for the horizontal boards. Then I cut the horizontal boards and attached them. I cut the board around the outlet area and left plenty of space around it so that I wouldn't have any problem plugging things in in the future. I caulked the inside edges of my newly formed accent wall boxes. Once this dried, I sanded down the joints. I picked out a blue color that I thought would look soothing in the room, and it only cost me $30. That was the cost of the wood, since I didn't have to pay for the paint, since it's something that I reused from a previous project. 